It's Leslie and Bill. Hey, hey. Yeah. Wow. Hello. Good to see you all again. It's been it's a been long a, time. Yeah, it's been, been a month. Over a month. It's been over a month of of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I would blame Leslie, but it's not all Leslie. No, no. We we shared we shared some of that. Yeah, yeah you were you that got spot. sick. Spa treatment at and General, General Hospital. <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, sometime to lie. You know, I, was, I shouldn't, but they may be watching. <laughs> if any of you work for the company that transports patients, I don't, don't listen. But um, they're not, they're not ambulance workers. They're just people with a driver's license. Basically, I, I heard oh. words that I've not ever heard before. It was cool. I didn't mind because I'm going to use it. They were cursing them, about the traffic or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a ride. Let me tell you, it was a ride. I didn't even realize you had to do emergency. I thought I well, it wasn't an emergency. It just Larry took you, but well, because it was in it was in Picton Hospital on Saturday morning at seven o'clock, and my doctor in Toronto said I'd like an MRI, a CT, and an ultrasound mm -hmm. today. And of course, in Picton, you can have a CT on Thursday um, and an MRI if you go to Belleville, but not on a weekend. And the ultrasound is, um, I think it's what Tuesday or Wednesday, so. Anyway, my doctor finally just said, "Okay, look, I'm Move your ass. find him. A, I'll find him a room, and we'll call, and you'll ju we'll just transport him here." So, and do you have to pay for that for anything? Apparently, so far, this whole transplant process, the bill that I have paid is one hundred and twenty-eight dollars. That's yeah. That's all of the stuff leading up to the surgery, the surgery, and the, yeah, yeah. It's the aftercare. That's it's amazing. Don't anybody ever complain in front of me. About our healthcare system. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, and you feel, uh, yeah. and your donor as well. I oh yeah, think oh yeah. Too. And even yeah. to the point, like we have a fund, but even to the point they had to calculate how much she spent on meals, how much it was for transportation, and she had a check in the mail wow. um, to cover that. So that's that nice. when you're a donor, you're not out anything. That's I really amazing. encourage people to be donors. Living donors are cool. Yes, I gotta find out. I, I've always had my donor card. I don't know if I signed up on. The website today will help me. Yes, it's donor.ca. It takes three minutes. If you wonder if you're a donor or not, it's not on your driver's license, it's on your health card. And so if you look okay. at your health card on the very back of it, it will say donor. And this is I'm not getting and it's a, either a 9Z or a Z9. Right. Um, one of them means you don't have my uh, organs and, and, and tissues. And the other one is just the organs, and I don't care what it is; it just needs to be there. Thirty-five percent of Canadian or of people in Ontario um, are signed up to be organ donors. Only thirty-five percent, and in this area of the province, we're at fifty-one percent, which sounds really cool. But that means forty-nine percent of people would watch me die rather than give me one of their organs when they died. I think it's just. People, it's like that whole thing. You got to actually do it. You got to not. You just got to sign up and do yep. it. And then you got to tell your <coughs> family so they know. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's if you buy one of my quilts at the market. If you buy one of my quilts anywhere, um, right now you will get fifty dollars off. And mm -hmm. the fifty dollars off is only if you're an organ donor because yesterday <laughs> was the anniversary, the liv li the liversary. If you go to my Facebook page or my Instagram, you can see a picture of the cake. <laughs> um, yeah, with the liver on it. I wanted to do red velvet, but Kate assured me, my daughter assured me that red velvet would be gross for a <laughs> liversary <laughs> cake. Yeah, I wish I'd done it. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's, yeah, that's me. And then I had Leiko um, Uchiyama come, uh, flew in from Ireland. She's an amazing felting artist, and she came, uh, I picked her up that Sunday, I think it was like the 25th, 26th, we did our work, our workshop from the 28th to the 1st of July, and we created, what is it, am I leaning on it, I'm leaning on it, this is the top that I made, and look how lacy it is, Leiko <laughs> said she's never seen anyone actually manage to get it this open and lacy, I was being so careful, this is called the pine needles um, effect that Leiko kind of well, she basically designed it, so this small. whole technique. This is uh, merino. But it so looks like it should be coarser. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's it's amazing. This size fits me. So when you start laying this out, this is 
eight feet by four feet wide. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you start rolling it, and then you just beat the stuffing on this thing. You literally are throwing it on the table to get everything to like. And what was cool, because you can see, I sort of did a reddier color up here going down to bluey colors. I dyed, I took natural roving and I dyed it myself. Oh, cool. Because everybody else was using already dyed roving, but I wanted to kind of play with this. And um, it actually felted better. She said a lot of times when you get the commercially dyed roving, um, it doesn't felt as quickly and as fast because of the dye process takes some of it out with the heat and stuff. Um, it doesn't felt quite as quickly. So, yes, this is the pine needle tunic that we did. So everybody was successful. We all got some and we fit. Uh, we had to work on some of the fits on, on some of them, but Leiko was an amazing teacher and did really well. And then it turned out that uh, Leiko <laughs> got COVID on the flight from Ireland to Canada. Now that's just the, that's just the search and they got us some old healthy pieces. So then Laco got COVID. No one else in the group got COVID, but of course, because Laco and Eddie were driving the car and everything, I got COVID. And this was my second COVID, um, way worse than the first one. It all into, went into my lungs. So I'm still coughing. Um, I have been fully vaccinated. I had, was up to date when I got COVID the last time in April, and then I got it again. And so I keep coughing, and so I've been wearing a mask because people would look at me and panic. <laughs> so I sound like I have the worst smoker's cough in type one, so it's just COVID and I'm not contagious anymore. And then of course, both my kids ended up getting COVID. Though funnily enough, Tim, my husband, he basically, came into the house with a mask on, made the meals for us, and then just ran out of the house and basically lived out in the barn for the most part, or in the basement of the house, so I never really saw him for like three weeks, because then, because Quinn got it first with Laco, and then I got it two days later, and then Jay came down with it like about 10 days after that, so it was like, it's weird, because if you've already had it, and the person in your household is quarantined because they just went positive, you still have to keep being quarantined, like, it was confusing as hell, and I. And they don't. The quarantine is not nearly as severe. No. As it was. It's I mean, supposed it's to be five days fully vaccinated. Right. Uh, I did for five days, and then I was started. Um, I went back to work for a day, and then the, then the coughing started the next day, and I thought I can't be at work like this, coughing this much. So, um, I stayed home for a couple of days, sick, and thank God. <laughs> It was a Saturday when I realized that I was really sick um, and I had no one to work. All the staff were either away, uh, family, right. uh, cottage, uh, we need surgery, like all this stuff, they were gone. <laughs> Nobody, and it's a Saturday in freaking July. So thankfully one of my friends and a knit um, knitter who's a regular at our store, <laughs> called her and I'm like, do you think you can run the store? And she was like, yeah, no problem. So, Jess? Yeah. Were we then on? Yeah, no, a different Jess. A different Jess. Um, so Jess came in and basically had the phone there and I was on speakerphone coughing and hacking <laughs> answering questions. And she did a great job. Um, cool. Yeah. And then this past Saturday, our entire area of the county. Yes. And I think Napanee and Tweed, yeah, I think yeah. it affected about 40,000 homes. Yeah. No power from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So we couldn't, we had no Wi-Fi, I don't think, either. Yeah. So we couldn't do any sales. They came in and tried to do a little bit. Um, and again, it was my turn to be away. I went camping with my boyfriend, Cooper, my four-legged boyfriend, my horse. <laughs> We trailered up and went camping. So if I said that, it would have been totally different. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, it's it's been crazy. So all the area was just down, like with no yeah. electricity. I went to Foodland last night. Their entire back wall of like 40 feet of, of ice cream things empty. They had no ice cream on Sunday. And Yesterday, I milk. managed to get that sea salt and caramel. <gasps> Uh, sea salt, uh, yes, sea salt, caramel, and vanilla yeah. bean, but I did. They did have some in yes last night. They so lost I was like, everything. I, I was like, "Why are the freezers empty?" And I'm like, "Cause I was out camping, so I didn't really get affected in that capacity because I didn't really know about it. But other than the women calling me, going, "Oh my God, how do we sell yarn?" I'm like, "Oh my God." But 
it was kind of funny because it was like if you're in the country, you were okay. Yeah. We were at um, Wellington Farmers Market every Saturday morning at the Eddie Hotel. Um, come and say hi. Um, and we had power. It was, oh. it, we were set up before it started. Oh. And then it went out about 8 o'clock and went off, but it came back on at 10 in the That's morning. Weird. And they had power all the way through from then on. But oh. as soon as you get into um, any of the major centers like Wellington and Picton, no power. Yeah, we had no power all the way through until 5 o'clock. When there's a big snowstorm, Picton has power and everybody else will, but yeah. we have this little cluster thing. But the country yeah. is normal and the country is normally without power. Yeah. I mean, that's you in the country, you have a generator. Yeah. Or, or an upper thing. Yeah. I remember bringing in a hundred baby chicks and the power was off <laughs> in the early, early spring one year. <laughs> and put them by the wood stove because <laughs> the power was off. They're going to die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I've been dying, as I will do. Finally, I'm back. <laughs> this is a new color. This one is called Wapu Blueberry Fields. Mm -hmm. I haven't got tags, I haven't got it on the internet yet. And then this one, they wanted something rich. Look how velvety and rich, that's what red velvet, right? Like this is just delicious. So these um, I'm calling Black River Black Caps because we have in the ditches, tons at our property, uh, the little, the black caps. I mean, they're more purpley, but when you, <laughs> when you squish them and you get the juice, your fingers are all these colors. So, yeah. and this Very looks cool. really nice with um, Legion, opening night at the Regent, because I'm trying to make colors up. Be a nice yeah, this looks really, really yeah. blend up nice. And it's got that navy and this uh, chartreuse green. And this lighter it it. gets in it, too. Yep. Very cool. Very rich. And I need a Black River name. Oh, look, got, there's a stitch marker on the floor. You've got new things. Yes. New cookers for your yarn. I did. I got. I, I added another cooker. Very so cool. Eight skeins in a ton. And I finished the County Sunset. Here we have a woman with us. Yep. Yeah. Well, I was going to grab her boots. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 <laughs> so no, no. It's got lace on the side. Um, oh. This top is called Zeva, Z-E-V-A. It's meant to be a short sleeve, but it's wool. So I'm like, I'm not going to do um, a short sleeve. Hello, Natalie. Um, because I know I either it's too hot to have short sleeves or it's too cold. So I knit until I got bored, and then I realized, well, this is... This is a nine stitch repeating pattern. So all I needed to do was add one stitch and I had 99 in the arm. So yeah, so I made the lace on this sleeve and it kind of comes to about here. I was trying to figure out, it's knit solid to here and then it's about that for the cuff. And I just was like, and what's the wool? It's 80% uh, merino, 20% nylon, fingering weight. Um, right. There was a lot of stitches. But uh, yeah, it did up nice, and this is the one I dyed. This is my uh, county sunset. County sunset, pretty. Yeah, yeah. Really, really pretty. And I like how the sleeves turned out because I was gonna make them longer, thinking oh, it's not gonna be long enough. But somebody said with these more bell sleeves, yeah. you're gonna dribble and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, think so. I like the neck. Yeah, that was a different neck. You actually went back in and picked it up and then knit two rows. Like yeah, it was it was a little different knit. Straightforward though. I mean, it was nice because you didn't get bored doing all this because of that little bit right, of lace. Right, right. I wouldn't get bored. I need to take a picture and put it on Ravelry um, because you know every, it's. I love going on Ravelry and looking at people's projects because then when you look at people's projects, then you see ideas like this, like what I did with the sleeves, where it was super, super simple. Mm -hmm. um, and but no one thinks of it, right? Until you see somebody else do it. So, yeah. Yeah. so you got a quilt that you're Just working a quilt. on? Ah. I am working because I have a show coming up in October, um, October 22nd. Gallery 2. Okay, gallery 2. Yes, 2 Gallery. Two, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, but so I need to have a whole mess of new books. So Just I'm remember to, to, by the way. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, so I'm, about every two weeks I'm coming up with a new one. Oh. Um, and this one, it's a huge, but so, yeah, you're not going to get to see it at all, but it's, it's Log cool. Cabin in blacks oh, that's gonna, that's and gonna little bits of, and then, uh, uh, yeah, then the oh, flying geese, cool. but they're wonky flying geese, and I didn't make them in a normal way. The wonky log cabins and as well. And then two and a bunch of, uh, oh, I'm doing it the wrong way. Of course, this, over on this side, 
all these little kind of turquoisey bits. But I took a black fabric that was like a canvas kind of thing, so it had light color, lighter colors in it, and I dyed it. Oh, so, so yeah, that's it's like kind of cool. Little pops just of little this one here. accent colors that go all the way through that side of the clothes. <coughs> yeah, it's right. very, very cool. Um, it's based on, and it'll get a two hour <coughs> for go to the song, uh, Brandy Carlisle's song, The Joker, which is. The no, joke, or is it The Joker? The joke. The joke. The joke. Yeah, yes. The and Joker the, is Steve Miller. <laughs> the joke. And it's, this quilt is dedicated to all of us who put up with years and years and years of being laughed at and put down yeah. and told that nothing's going to go right for us because of the way that we are. Um, but we, we did. We made a choice. We did. And, um, Which was not a choice. The whole purpose of the song towards the end here, here is the chorus is, um, <coughs> I've seen the movie and I know how it ends and the joke's on them. Yeah, I love it. Because we made it. That's it's, right. It was really fun to do because it started out I wanted to do black, but it just got so boring. Yep. Um, no, that's not awesome. boring now. So it's really not black because there's bits of there's black with brown, there's black with gray, there's black with and green. And little bits of gold. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that like some metallic gold? I'm yeah, just metallic. Out? Liv Zellia, yeah. who is one of my favorite favorite <coughs> fabric designers and also a really good friend. I really really like her. I think I've mentioned her. She does good. Mm -hmm. She just does good. Um, that's her fabric, oh. and it's true. It is metallic, and that's just that's Liz. She just she is metallic. Like that one. Yes. I'm, in a I'm in a triangle. Yeah. There we are. Now I'm in. There we are. There. Done. So that's it for now. I do, as I say, about every two weeks, I manage to get another one done. I have sold. I started out with 35 baby quilts at the farmers market, and I have 23 left. So. If you want one, get there quick. And I've sold a couple of my other quilts, too, because I take two or three just to hang up at the back. Mm -hmm. And I sold a couple of those, which is really nice, because they're not baby quilt types. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> asthma, COVID. <laughs> That's OK. Larry has a cough, but his is asthma. Yeah, yeah that's what she left with us. Do you want to show those books that we have? Oh, sure. These are for Aaron's going to check these out. Well, I know the yeah. one is pretty cool. The India plant. India plant is fabulous. The book comes with a little thing. Yeah. Around it that makes it prettier. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> it's a little piece of well, it's a little piece of paper, and I had this July of 2000 or of 19, 2015. Oh wow. So yeah. Yeah. But I've it's had this book always stamped in the in, in this But store. it tells you if you want yellows and golds, it tells you the the Which things plant? to use to dye it. Um, and the oh. part of it, the common name for it, and the part of it that you use for all the different colors. So if you want greens, there's so for eco greens. Sorry, natural dyes and stuff. This is a basically kind of a rhododendron leaves, and they're the color. Mm -hmm. oh. So anyway, there's just a lists and lists, and yeah, that's it's got beautiful pictures. So for eco printing, eco and eco dyeing. Right. Sorry, natural dyeing. Yeah. Eco printing. There's no H. Botanical eco, so dyes like eco, for not echo. <laughs> botanical dyes <laughs> for beautiful echo textiles. Dyes. Yeah, yeah, and I've echo, used there's no H. Yeah, I've used it a little bit, um, but Erin, uh, who works on Mondays, but she was here Monday, yesterday. Monday, Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday. Yep. And she was here. And if you have a chance to come in on a Monday and Tuesday, this woman wears <laughs> the absolute coolest dress <laughs> all the time. And I just want to cut them up and make them into She's quilts. She's got that raccoon picture. Yeah. What's that raccoon? Like, I don't know. He's Every one is like a cartoon character on her dresses and, and the bright, bright colors yeah, and, and what, dark backgrounds and just what perfect, was the name? Uh, what's the name of the critter that was on the one she had on yesterday? The pink one? Oh, it was, was a jersey. It was a jersey, or? so I stopped looking at it. <laughs> it was too sketchy she to has, make a quilt out of. She has so many cute things. She's been, she, now she wants to try and knit a little cardigan for each one of those dresses. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then I have this one as well, which is. Um, Natural processes and textile arts, and it covers a whole lot more different kinds of things. Um, so the, the rust, rust marks rust and forage yeah. fibers, and yeah, it's just it's just pretty cool. I love rust dye. Yeah, I do it. I have a quilt that's not here. I'm bringing a quilt to the market on Saturday that's rust dye. It's oh, yeah. I started with a black on black fabric, a black print on a brown fabric that's from Africa. Um, and I made that was the basis of the quilt. And then while I was working on it, I decided I needed more fabric and I couldn't find any of the right color. 
So I used rust dye, which got the right color, and discharge. Oh. Discharge is so much fun. We used to, we used to do it with our blue jeans. Yeah. Um, but you just start with fabric and you bleach it. You just got to remember when it gets the color you want to peroxide it. Yeah. Oh, peroxide. Peroxide is okay. what I use. I use something to stop it. Discharge because it's in chlorine in my pool. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I used to, yeah. I've discharged just because of playing with bleats and then yeah. touching myself. Um, on my <laughs> knees. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And there's some sewn together. It's just, it's just yeah. a really pretty book and it's, it's, very respective. Ideas. It's yeah. respected. Yeah. And good information, too. Yeah. So before she buys them, I said, have a look at these. So Very I brought them in cool. today. And I walked carrying these books. I felt like I was in the military carrying the weight <laughs> on my back. And I'm, I'm sure I looked like I was in the military. Yeah. Yeah. And Bill got me this because I we, we both have reader daughters. So yeah. I had mine and then Bill fell in love with mine and bought yeah. his. Um, yeah, so this is my, my dying apron. So. I babysat Leslie's dog yeah. for a weekend. And that was, that was, that was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, but my daughter was in Australia um, for 19 days. We had their puppy, and I love their puppy. But their puppy is a Wheaton Terrier Wooter, so it's cross with a poodle. Okay. But Terrier, I don't think I have a, uh, maybe I'm too Terrier like, but when they get an idea, it's like you and diet. You know, you just, yeah. nothing stops you. <laughs> and it's kind of like me with, you know, my yeah. Head. But you just, nothing stops you. So in the middle of the night, when it thinks someone's in the house because the blind just rattled in the bri in the breeze, it doesn't stop uh, all night long. It's just not, on edge. it's just, yeah, just on edge. A tiny little, bloop, <laughs> bloop, just enough to keep you awake. Yeah. <laughs> it's just when you're falling asleep. Yeah, when you would only, she only did it twice. And both nights were Friday nights when I have to get up at 5.15 for the market on Saturday. Uh, so, but I still love her. Yeah, so it's a long weekend this weekend, and then oh, we get the holiday Monday. We have uh, friend, uh, family coming Saturday for Tuesday. Kind of offsets cool. that driving from because they're oh, from yeah, Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they can, you can bring them on Sunday to La La Land Glassworks across from Oxford Street oh. for the Pink Cow Market. Oh, okay. Which is, yeah, yeah it's that. fabulous. Yeah, how many vendors are at the Pink Cow? I think it's, I don't know. So that's 62 and plus the state. Can you carry the one? Two or more, yeah. Yeah, um, um, I don't know how many there are. It's on, they have their own Facebook hmm. page. Um, and if you go to, sounding like some sort of a, anyway, if you go to my Facebook or my Instagram, um, I have the card there, it lists all of that. There's yeah. 30 vendors, it's a lot of vendors. And a really nice variety. Um, and tomorrow is Thursday, the yeah. Women's Auxiliary oh, Craft Show. I hope Main Street's open for that. No? Oh, crazy, Main Street. No, I it's yeah, it's just that Jew. Yeah, it's disconnecting. Yeah, because Vera um, was supposed to work tomorrow, so I'm going to work tw what, 10 to 12, and she's going to go to the thing in the morning, and then she's going to come in, and I'm going <laughs> to fill in the afternoon. I haven't been in years. I haven't either. Years and years, like 12 years, yeah. Mm -hmm. I should get you in the afternoon. Six, yeah, if you want to go. Know, I'll check with me, I'll be a fan. Okay. Later. No, I have some debt. I have to take care of my school debt. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's, it's, yeah, people don't know. They want somebody with a truck and a fairly large trailer, house trailer behind it, just outside Books and Company where the road literally ends. There's yeah. And all along there, there are signs say detour, detour, road closed. Um, and this thing just kept coming through and there were cars parked and they didn't know where to go. And so they're all upset because we didn't know the road ended. And I said, well, the detour the, should the, have been the, an indication. The road closed, um, I guess they should have just said road ends, um, you moron. But anyway, yeah. so they're backing this thing up and oh, it was, it was great fun, and apparently we have books and company that said they've been watching that all day. <laughs> people who don't believe road closed means yeah. road closed. Well, so we horse trailered um, for two hours. I'm telling you, there's nothing more terrifying than having your beautiful big baby in the back behind your pickup on the 401. It's terrifying. The 401, yeah. Yeah, because you have to go along the 401 and then what, the 115. Anyways. Mm. Um, Bernadette's driving her trailer, her horse, and my horse are in there, and we get to the park, and then she realizes she has to back into the spot, and she goes, 
<laughs> so um, I'm like, well, I can. And she goes, you are hired. Yeah. <laughs> we got the horses out first. It's always safer that way. Yeah. But her trailer is so much bigger than my little eight-foot water trailer, like where you carry the water to fill up the well and the rope goes around. And it's like, <sighs> so I guess she's like going, no, 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 it's the wrong way. I'm like, just wait. I said, it'll go wrong and then it'll go right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But if you turn it opposite, the direction you want, you can tell us to go. Yeah, it, but I did a beautiful job, I have to say. Uh, the other woman who was trailing her horse and a half horse hit a tree, damaged the tail light on her truck. It was all, yeah, she took very good care of her truck, so the, it was bad. The best thing that ever <laughs> happened to me as a camper with a trailer, I didn't have it for very much, um, when we camp close by, I would go to the campsite ahead of time mm -hmm. and make sure that I could drive straight through with the trailer. <laughs> um, but now, Sounds it's all online. And you can see the actual map oh. of your site, so you can see that it's a drive-through. Oh, okay. Um, and they yeah. drive through. I mean, I had a little bowler, but Well, you should I see still these little horse trailers. They're like 30-foot trailers. They're driving transports, and yeah, yeah. it's this giant pickup with four doors and a full size because they're going to bring all their own hay. This giant trailer with two to three horses on it, and then there's living quarters in the trailer. Wow. And 99% of the people are women. So, and then... <laughs> Not so much. If you've ever watched the series Yellowstone, if you like horses, even if you like cowboys, it's really, it's such a good series. Uh, who's the, what's his name? I don't know. I've heard um, about it. It's something about the men in tight blue jeans. <laughs> yes, there's lots of men in tight blue yeah. jeans. Uh, Maybe I've watched the, it. Who's the guy in it? Um, Kevin Costner. Oh, really? Plays the oh, dad. He yeah. likes me. Or, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's the other way around. But well, they are, they're always joking around about um, women that are barrel racers. Well, they are so right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because all of a sudden, you'd be sitting there drinking some wine in the evening. All of a sudden, some woman's like, and they're just whipping up and down the, the laneway between some of the trucks and they're like horses are all like what it's holy crap no helmets on any of those yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. but I, I mean I'm an English writer so I have of course my oh, English really? saddle oh, really? yeah well it's just the way I was raised it was always English and stuff right and, and now it's like um, Hooper's a total you. western horse but telling you we did 14 kilometers I was begging for a western saddle by the halfway point of that. My butt was a little thick, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> hey, Heather. So, yeah, it was uh, it was brilliant fun. Um, all the other horses, except Hooper and Cowboy, who were the old 17-year-old and the 15-year-old, the other ones were just being idiots and trying to buck and being stupid about the bugs and everything. And Hooper was just steady Eddie because, of course, when there's no electricity, it was 9 in the morning because he had to go early because it's so hot. So I'm on the horse, and I'm just letting the reins just sort of through my wrist, and I'm I'm texting, and Hooper's just following everybody, and I'm like, good thing you know where we're going to Hooper, yeah, and I'm like yeah. texting and trying to figure out the password to the square app because we're like trying to do that because we don't have the pup, the debit machine. It's like oh my god, right. I'm flipping through and stuff on my phone. I just want to clarify just briefly that nine o'clock in the morning is not in there. I'm just I saying. I know. Oh. Well, the yeah. other, well I know the store opens at ten, but. No, I know. For me, I get up at 8.30, yeah, yeah. but these women get up at 6.30. Yeah, yeah. And there's three of us all sleeping in the trailer, and they're really kind. Like, they got had their tea and their coffee, and they put, they sat outside, and they're pretty in quiet and stuff, but when someone's up, you just got to get up. Like, I mean, it wasn't super comfortable in there, but, oh, man. But it was I fun. Had, yeah, it was brilliant. I had no idea horses poop that much. Because yeah, yeah. I've never taken care of them. They've always been at the border. Mm -hmm. You have to take it with yeah, you? Yeah, well, no. You, there, there's a place to dump your manure, but so you've got to fill the wheelbarrow. So this is an actual camping ground? Campground yeah. for so horses? each campsite has a corral for two horses. So we, you, and you have to bring your own hay, and you put the hay in with it, and you've got to clean that corral completely, or they'll ch charge you more. It's the Sandoraskan campground. There's normal camping as well, and then there's the permanent camping, which also has horses on the different side too. And then there's a hundred kilometers of trails, sorry, a hundred acres, not a hundred kilometers, might be a hundred kilometers. And then oh, it's wow. on the edge of the Ganaraskin forest, okay. which is a thousand acres, I think, of, of trails. And it's incredible, but the Ganaraskin forest 
basically got thrashed and when was that crazy windstorm like micro oh. so in, in april yeah. so it's completely closed until they're hoping the fall <coughs> and oh. you should see these trees like big trees 20 feet in the air just went snap oh. and they're just hanging there across stuff so you can't go in there even the sand rock and there was they had to do a lot of clean up and they've got logging companies coming in and then there's areas where it's just a swath of 100 foot trees that are just trashed like right down roots up in the air like just wow. it unbelievable and then actually while we were there you could hear there was another tree fell in the forest behind where the horses were because all of a sudden the horses we heard the crack and the fall and the horses are all like what and there was on on where hooper was there was damage on the roof and there was a huge tree down that obviously it hit the roof and then had fallen in behind there yeah. and apparently we met one woman who was actually riding during that she was out on the trail, and luckily was fine, but she said the horse was completely fine. She was freaking out. I was just gonna say. And the horse, the horse was just like, no. <laughs> so funny, some things just freak horses out, and other yeah. times it's like, hey, relax. Wow. <laughs> you know, so. Well, it's exciting yeah. that there's a campsite, a campground for horses. Yeah, there's a, um, there's another one, uh, it all Relax Acres would be or something. Primarily, yeah. Well, it, honestly, uh, I saw one man with his girlfriend wife and then I saw an older couple and a, and a guy that rides as well so yeah but no it was 99% women I think barrel racers 99% of the people with horses are women yeah. yeah yeah at our barn it's all women and it's funny because professionally there's more men professional or uh, competitive horse riders right. than women and it's like but I don't it's all women Huh. It's weird. It's yeah. weird. But it is one of the only sports, unless you can name another one, that men and women compete equally. Right? Jumping. All massage, of those, yeah. It's the men and women compete against each other. There's no. Because the horse is actually the contestant. Kind of, yeah. It's all about the control of the beast. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So it's, I can't think of another sport where that's friend, equally. I have a friend who competes. is a. In the Olympics, was carriage driving? Oh wow! As an as an event, and yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Which and she actually was hurt in a very very serious accident. Um, in well, that's what you were sitting there the talking about, watching all these women running around with no helmets on, and the guys do, and and I just turned to us, and we had the neighbors sitting with us, because of course you all talk about horses the entire weekend. It was fantastic. So the neighbors yeah. were with us, and the other group were with us, so there was like eight of us. And we were just looking around, and they're like, why are they not wearing helmets? Like, just, it's crazy. And I said, okay, everyone put your hand up who's had a had a concussion riding a horse, and everyone yeah. <laughs> yeah. put yeah. hand up. And how many of you weren't wearing a helmet, and one person put their hand up? Everyone else was just like, yeah, no, helmets. And, then, helmet with and I'm like, and do you wear a helmet now? And she's like, yes. She actually had such a bad fall, she fell head hit a telephone pole Ooh. and the girls that were riding with her were there that like with us this weekend they were like we'll never get that sound out of their head and it was just oh, blood just, oh. yeah it was, it was horrible yeah. but she wears a helmet now yeah. I would think yeah just, it's funny wow. how sweaty but god it's, it's I got the concussion fell on the ground hit my head cracked my helmet, I hit it so hard. Because I remember sliding, I remember the last image that I was sliding down his shoulders because he had taken off from out from under me and I wasn't strong enough to hold on. Ended up on my back, cracked it. Apparently I'd already talked to the woman's husband whose field I was in. I don't remember that. She walked up and I said, I think something's wrong. Didn't know why I was in the field. Didn't remember the horse I, <laughs> name I was wow. riding. I thought I was riding her horse and couldn't figure that out. Couldn't figure out why I was sitting in the field in the dark. <laughs> and there was so, no wine involved. No. <laughs> and the doctor said that it was actually the secondary impact. So your head yep. hits the back of the thing, the helmet and hits, it's the brain hitting inside your skull. Yeah, that's and what a concussion is. Yeah, I yeah, they're awful. couldn't function for three weeks. I couldn't finish a sentence. And there are people who, that's permanent. So that's the reason why I say never wear it right again. <laughs> It's a good thing he doesn't do anything unsafe, like to ride a motorcycle or something. True. 
yeah. or go yeah. kayaking yeah. all by himself at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Living on the edge. There you go. All right. <laughs> well, good chatting it's with nice you. It's nice to be back. It is. Hopefully, people it. will watch us. <laughs> yeah, I hope somebody's watching this. Um, yeah, and we'll do it again in a couple of weeks. I hope so. Yeah, well, there's no more It'll yoga. It'll be August. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And no more. We still have August. my studio. That's exciting. Yeah. It means it's, I've got it for at least all of August and likely September. So, all right. I'm hoping it just keeps going like this. You get to do a month by month. Until somebody leases it. Right. The, the rent is incredibly expensive, so we can, we can't afford it, but I, we just pay a, a nominal amount just because. So they got somebody in there. Yeah, so yep. there's somebody there. Okay. That's a perfect thing. It, yeah, mm -hmm. I wish I had the money, but anyway. Well, if you're in Prince Edward County, come and visit us. Yes, We're and I am just, it, I'm other. in the back of the armory building, and lots and lots of people are finding me and coming in, good. and it's cool. That's good. And if you want to rent a kayak, cabin fever kayaks, yes. Tim's been pretty slow too, so. Oh, really? And the river's been beautiful. Oh, yeah, it's tough. Well, I mean, we had the COVID insanity, so I think we're trying to find our, what the new normal is. Right, right. Because <laughs> we really weren't open before that, other than the first year, sort of thing. So. You're still the only one here. <clears throat> Well, there's, um, there is one, but it's on the big water, and it's, yeah. you got some big waves and big wind and yeah, it's just openness, where the river is, it's just, like going through a national park of bird watching, like the bird watchers that come, and then they go to the bird uh, right. sanctuary place, and they're like, there's more birds at your river, and I'm like, yeah, I know. Yeah, oh, well, cool. We're fighting with that damn beaver. The beaver came back again, <laughs> chewed up another damn tree. <laughs> yeah, right now, who, who lives there? Oh, right. Well, he's taking trees that are useless to him. They're too damn big, and they're just, he just <laughs> can't use them. He couldn't move them once they fell. Yeah. Do you know, apparently, there's like a whole bunch of beavers die from trees falling on them every year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they may be our national creature, but I don't know that that's because of their smart. No. <laughs> Poor beavers. Doesn't it's sound really like it. Yeah. yeah. You can see that. I mean, their heads are right in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> Anyways, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, yeah, we could talk forever. Thank you. Thank you. Love you guys. And we'll chat soon. All right. Bye.